Hello, sleepyheads. The queen of all Redia comes bearing two stories, so turn down the lights, close your eyes, and have no fear, because tonight, come what may, you can trust me, there will be a happy ending. Everybody ready? Let us begin. Rereading their works with the benefit of age and pop culture references, I've come to the inescapable conclusion that the Brothers Grimm were nothing more than Jerry Springer guests before their time. Case in point, The Cat and the Mouse in Partnership by the Brothers Grimm. A certain cat had made the acquaintance of a mouse and had said so much about the great love and friendship she felt for the little rodent that at length the mouse agreed they should live and keep house together. But we must prepare for winter, or else we shall suffer from hunger, said the cat, and you, little mouse, cannot venture everywhere or you will be caught in a trap some day. The good advice was followed, and a large pot of fat was bought, but they did not know where to keep it. After much consideration, the cat said, I know of no place it would be better stored than in the church, for none dare take anything from there. We shall set it beneath the altar, and not touch it again until we are truly in need. But it was not long before the cat had a great yearning for it, and said to the mouse, I need to tell you something, little mouse. My cousin has brought a son into the world, and asked me to be the godmother. The child is white with brown spots, and I am to hold him over the font at the christening. Let me go out today, and you look after the house by yourself. Yes, yes, answered the mouse, by all means go. And if you get anything good to eat and drink, please think of me, for I should like some too. The cat had no cousin, however, and no godchild. She went straight to the church, sidled up to the pot, and licked the top layer of fat clean off. Then she took a walk upon the roofs, stretched herself in the sun, and not until evening did she return home. Well, here you are, said the mouse. No doubt you've had a merry day. All went well, answered the cat. What name did they give the child? Top off, said the cat. Top off, cried the mouse. That is a very odd and uncommon name. Is it a family name? What does it matter, replied the cat. It's no worse than crumb stealer, as your godchild would be called. The cat was soon seized by another fit of longing and said to the mouse, You must do me a favor and once more manage the house for a day on your own. I am again asked to be a godmother, and as the child has a white ring around his neck, I cannot refuse. The little mouse consented, and the cat crept to the church where she devoured half the pot of fat. Nothing ever tastes so good as what one keeps to oneself, thought she. When she went back home, the mouse inquired, And what was this child christened? Half done, answered the cat. Half done? Are you mad? exclaimed the mouse. I've never heard that name before in my life, and I'll wager it's not in any book. The cat's mouth soon began to water, and she said to the mouse, Good things go in threes. I've been asked to be a godmother again. This child is black and has white paws, which only happens once every few years. You will let me go, won't you? Top off, half done. Such odd names, said the mouse. I look forward to hearing the third. Little mouse, said the cat, you sit at home in a fur coat which doesn't even cover your tail, and your mind is filled with fantasies. That's what happens when you do not go out in the daytime. The greedy cat ran to the church and emptied the pot of fat. When everything is eaten, 
Then one has some peace, said she to herself, and she did not return home until night. The little mouse at once asked the name of the third child. It will please you no more than the others, said the cat, for he is called All Gone. All Gone, cried the mouse. That is the most dubious name of all. I have never seen it in print, nor have I heard it with my ears. What could possibly be the reason for such a name? Then she shook her head, curled herself up, and went to sleep. From that day forth no one again invited the cat to be a godmother, but when winter had come and there was no food to be found outside, the mouse remembered their provision. Come, cat, said the little mouse, let us go to our pot of fat. We shall enjoy that. Yes, let's, replied the cat. I think you will enjoy that as much as you would enjoy sticking your dainty tongue out a window. They set off for the church, but when they arrived, though the pot was still in place, it was empty. Now I see what has happened, said the mouse. Now it comes to light. You are a true friend. You devoured it all. First it was top off, then came half done, and then... One more word and I will eat you too, growled the cat. But all gone was already on the poor mouse's lips, and scarcely had she spoken it before the cat pounced and swallowed her whole. Verily, that is the way of the world. The End I kid thee not. That is the Brothers Grimm, unsupervised and unbalanced. And so, to be fairy and balanced, I give you The Cat and the Mouse in Partnership as Mother's Grimm. Not long ago, and just around the corner, a certain cat made the acquaintance of a certain mouse, and they formed so great a love and friendship that it was agreed they should live and keep house together. But we must prepare for winter, or else we shall suffer from hunger, said the cat, and that, little mouse, is the only thing which might put a serious strain on our relationship. The good advice was followed, and they bought a pot of fat, but they had no place to keep it. After much consideration, the cat said, I know of no place better to store a pot of fat than with our good neighbor, the friendly koala, for not only is he friendly, but he thinks fat is gross and would not even be tempted. Let us first ask if we might keep this in his cellar, and then we'll forget all all about it until we are truly in need. Not long after the pot was safely in the friendly koala's cellar, the cat was presented with a wonderful opportunity. I must tell you something, little mouse. My cousin has brought a son into the world and asked me to be the child's godmother. They say he is white with brown spots, and I am to perform the christening. Will you be so kind as to look after the house by yourself for a day? Yes, yes, of course, replied the mouse. By all means, go. And if they have good food and drink, please think of me, for I should like some too. There is no need to even ask, said the cat, for you are my dearest friend in all the world, and I could enjoy neither food nor drink if you were hungry and thirsty. And with that the cat departed. The mouse knew not exactly where the cat had gone, but they enjoyed a bit of mystery in their relationship, and the mouse knew all she needed to know, which is that a cat will always tell you the truth, the very reason they are often hated. The little mouse did chores for two that day. The cat, meantime, had hastened to the christening, licked her new godson from the tips of his little pussy cat ears to the tippy toes of his little pussy foots, and then she wandered the roofs and stretched in the sun, and then she did not say. But it was long after sunset when she returned home. Well, here you are, said the mouse, 
No doubt you've had a merry day. It was wonderful to see my family again, but it was not all fun and games. I neither ate nor drank, and I am tired, said the cat. What name was the child given? They had twins, Bamboozle and Patu, said the cat. Bamboozle and Patu, laughed the mouse. The first sounds like you are pulling my leg, but the second sounds French. My grandfather was French, said the cat, but I read recently that everyone can trace their ancestors all the way back to Africa. You and I are surely related somehow. And with that lovely thought they fell asleep and kept each other warm through the night. Within a few weeks the cat was presented with yet another opportunity and said to the mouse, Please do me a favor once more and manage the house on your own for a day. I have again been made a godmother, and as the child has a white ring around his neck, I cannot refuse. Yes, yes, of course, replied the mouse, by all means go. And if they have good food and drink, please think of me, for I should like some too. There is no need to even ask, said the cat, for you are my dearest friend in all the world, and I could enjoy neither food nor drink if you were hungry and thirsty. And with that the cat departed. Again the mouse knew not exactly where the cat had gone, but she felt certain she knew all that she needed to know, which is that a cat will always tell you the truth, the very reason they are often feared. The little mouse did chores for two that day. The cat, meantime, had raced to the christening, licked her new godson from the tips of his little pussy cat ears to the tippy toes of his little pussy foots. Then she wandered the roofs and stretched in the sun, and then she did not say. But it was long after sunset when she returned home. Well, here you are at last, said the mouse. No doubt you've had a merry day. It was wonderful to see my family again, but it was not all fun and games. I neither ate nor drank, and I am tired, said the cat. And what was this child christened? Patois, said the cat nonchalantly. Patois, exclaimed the mouse. Now that is definitely French. I already told you that my grandfather was French, said the cat, and that scientists say everyone can trace their ancestors all the way back to Africa. You and I are surely related somehow. And with that lovely thought they fell asleep and kept each other warm through the night. Opportunity soon came knocking once again for the cat, and she said, Good things really do happen in Three's Little Mouse. I have another godchild. She is black with white paws and my cousin's first daughter. Oh, you will let me go, won't you? Of course, of course, insisted the mouse, you must go. And if they have good food and drink, please think of me, for I would like some too. There is no need to even ask, said the cat, for you are my dearest friend in all the world, and I could enjoy neither food nor drink if you were hungry and thirsty. And with that the cat departed. Still the mouse knew not exactly where the cat had gone, and still she felt certain that she knew everything she needed to know, which is that a cat will always tell you the truth, the very reason they are often ignored. The little mouse did chores for two that day. The cat, meantime, had sprinted to the christening, licked her new goddaughter from the tips of her little pussy cat ears to the tippy toes of her little pussy foots, and then she wandered the roofs and stretched in the sun, and then she did not say. But it was long after sunset when she returned home. Well, here you are at last, said the mouse. No doubt you've had a merry day. It was wonderful to see my family again, but it was not all fun and games. I neither ate nor drank, and I am tired, said the cat. What name did they give the child this time, asked the little mouse. Pot Cat. 
Spot Cat, exclaimed the mouse. Now that is obviously a family name. Well, said the cat, scientists do say everyone can trace their ancestors all the way back to Africa, so there's probably a little cat in us all. And with that lovely thought, they fell asleep and kept each other warm through the night. Fall came, the leaves fell, and there would be no more godchildren until spring. When the snows fell, there was no more food to be found outside. Suddenly the mouse remembered their provision and said, My dear cat, let us go for our pot of fat. We shall enjoy that. I'll get my hat, replied the cat, for I do believe we will enjoy that as much as we have ever enjoyed anything. And thus they sallied forth. But when they arrived at the friendly koala's house and entered the cellar, there were four pots of fat under a mountain of bamboo. Now I see what has happened, cried the mouse. Now it comes to light. You are a true friend and quite the wit. Bamboozle, pot two, pot trois, pot quatre. Enchanté, how duvalier. Please, said the cat, I may be clever, but I'm no saint. I did this as much for myself as for you. But, said the little mouse, you helped our friend the koala harvest a mountain of bamboo so that he too would eat well for the winter, and you filled three more pots of fat. I know they came from your share of your family's christening feasts. You kept nothing for yourself. You did my share of the chores, said the cat, so one more word and I'll eat your share of the food. Who could ever have imagined I'd be saying these words to a cat? But I don't believe you, said the little mouse, for you are my dearest friend in all the world, and you could enjoy neither food nor drink if I were hungry and thirsty. Verily, that should be the way of the world. The end. That can be the way of the world, boys and girls. Accept no substitute. Good night, sweet dreams.